and a warm welcome to our first broadcast of the Histocon 2021. My name is Vasily Gollert. I'm a journalist working for German public broadcaster ARD, and I'm one of two hosts who are going to guide you through the shows today and tomorrow. The Histocon is also an international festival and a platform to exchange and discuss different perspectives of history and remembrance. And speaking of different perspectives, I know from my own uh, background how difficult it is. I was born in Ukraine, grew up in Germany, and have a lot of family in Russia. And all three countries have a different approach of looking back, of dealing with the past. And understanding the different perspectives of history helps a lot in understanding the world today. Look back think ahead. That's the motto of the Histocon. Under the title The World After 1945 New Beginnings, we will be looking into global post-war history and explore the topics freedom, remembrance and peace together with you. And as I mentioned before, I'm not alone. I'm very lucky to have you, Sumi, as a co-host. I'm Sumi Somaskanda. I'm a news anchor and journalist here in Berlin. I'm really excited to be co-hosting Histocon with you, Vasily, especially because the themes of Histocon, uh, memory, remembrance, history, these are the themes that underpin the work that we do as journalists. It is a context that we use to tell our stories. It is a truism that history is written by the victors, but the great thing about Histocon is that we're gonna get a diverse array of voices and expand our perspective of history. We hope that you do as well. And today in this show, we're going to take the topic freedom as our focus. We're gonna look at how independence and dependence developed since 1945, since the end of the Second World War. We'll ask questions like what is freedom, who fought for independence, and of course, what can we learn uh, from the past? So we have a jam-packed show for you over the next hour, a great show. We'll have video clips, uh, fireside chats. We have the Nigerian researcher, Dr. Linda Irolu, who will be with us, also musician and activist, Vincent Bababutilabo. And we're gonna have musical performances from the Zimbabwean hip hop artist, Awa Kiwe. She was warming up here a little while ago and she's fabulous, so you Amazing. don't wanna miss that. And while we started introducing the program, we have artists working already here. And this is why I'll walk over to them. It's an artist collective called Tape That from Berlin. And they create artworks out of adhesive tapes. Um, Nikki, why and how did you come up with that idea? Yeah, thank you for having us. Basically, each of our artists has his own story. But the main idea was to use an everyday object and doing art out of it instead of using brush or paint or anything else. And what's the connection between this, which will be an artwork, and the Histocon 2021? Uh, so this is going to be an abstract artwork which pictures the three topics. And I think, uh, let's see, <laughs> and in the end you will see the result. It's definitely a good reason to stick with us till the end, till the last stream tomorrow. But Sumi, you have other good reasons why everyone should watch all three streams. That's right, Vasily. One of the reasons is that we have a global audience. We partnered with countries around the world for Histocon. And for this episode, the partner countries are Uganda, Georgia, and France. And there are watch parties at those locations watching together under COVID safe conditions. In Uganda, they couldn't come together, but they're together in spirit. So first of all, hello to our watch parties in those countries. We will be going live over to Uganda and also to France to check in with those watch parties and hear about the workshops that they have done also to interact with them as well. And we want to interact with you, our Histocon community. So please share your comments, your thoughts, your questions with us in our live chat. And we have our social media host, Esther, here. She's the one who's going to be interacting with you and bringing your comments uh, into our show. Thanks, Subi. So I'm really excited to be here as the voice of the Histocon community for 2021. And we'd love to hear your input. So firstly, we just want to know where in the world are you watching from? And you can let us know by visiting www.menti, that's M-E-N-T-I.com. And if you enter the code 72004745, you can let us know where you're watching from. And we'd also love you to just comment in our live chat here on YouTube and as we go through the show we'd love you to share your thoughts and insights with us. So back to you Sumi. 
All right, Esther, and for sure, as she said, make sure that you uh, interact with us and share your thoughts and comments. Now, the Histicon 2021 was organized by the Federal Agency for Civic Education here in Germany, the BPB, and funded by the Federal Foreign Office. And we want to bring in a statement now from the director of the Agency for Civic Education, uh, Thomas Kruger. Uh, he actually was one of the founding members of the Social Democratic Party in the former East Germany. So he has been fighting for civil rights. And this is the message that he wanted to share with us. Wer heute über Geschichte redet, redet meistens über die Gegenwart. Mein Name ist Thomas Krüger, ich bin Präsident der Bundeszentrale für politische Bildung. Ich begrüße euch alle sehr herzlich zur Histocon 2021. Ich freue mich, dass ihr dabei seid. Die Bundeszentrale für politische Bildung ist eine Institution, die in Deutschland seit 1952 versucht, politische und geschichtliche Inhalte auf sehr verschiedene Weise unter das Volk zu bringen. Das Wichtige ist, dass die Menschen sich ihre eigene Meinung zu diesen Fragen bilden können. Und das wollen wir gerne auch weltweit unterstützen. Ja, ich habe ein Land erlebt, die DDR, in der es politisch nicht wirklich freiheitlich zuging. Und politisch gesehen spielte in der DDR eine sehr wichtige Rolle der Satz von Rosa Luxemburg. Die Freiheit ist immer die Freiheit der Andersdenkenden. Und diese Form von Meinungsfreiheit, die sich dahinter verbirgt, Widerspruch zu äußern, das äh, ist etwas Konstitutives gewesen, was viele Menschen äh, in Polen, in Tschechien, in Ungarn und so weiter und eben auch in der DDR erlebt haben. Demokratie ist etwas konstitutiv Wichtiges. Es fordert uns äh, heraus, es fordert von uns ab, dass wir andere Meinungen akzeptieren lernen, äh, dass wir andere Perspektiven gelten lassen und dass wir diese Spielräume, die wir für uns selbst reklamieren, auch allen anderen einräumen. Deshalb ist die große Herausforderung, sich heute mit Geschichte zu beschäftigen, als etwas, was sehr viel Gegenwart und Zukunft verhandelt. Wer heute über Geschichte redet, redet meistens über die Gegenwart. Ich freue mich, dass die Histocon 2021 virtuell beginnt. Das hat mit der Pandemie zu tun, aber die Pandemie kommt hoffentlich auch an ihre Grenzen. Und insofern freue ich mich, alle euch nächstes Jahr im Sommer 2022 in Berlin wiederzusehen bei der Histocon 2022 in einer Stadt, die wie keine andere äh, die Grenzen von Freiheit, die Unfreiheit selber erlebt hat und vor allem das Wichtigste, sie hat sie auch überwunden. Berlin is special indeed and as you may have seen, Thomas Krüger's office is situated right next to the former Berlin Wall. The wall came down when thousands of people protested peacefully for freedom. But the question is, what does freedom really mean? And was the world after 1945 a turning point for dependence and independence? Let's find out in the next video clip created by Magda Krebs and Lea Mayera. What does freedom mean? Freedom is not something that anybody can be given. Freedom is something people take and people are as free as they want to be. Freedom from is the state of being free without restrictions and oppression within a society. Freedom to means to act according to your own choices and preferences. Expressing your opinion or choosing your religion is part of your personal freedom. However, Claiming freedom goes along with taking responsibility. Your personal freedom ends where someone else's freedom is restricted. In history, European countries restricted the right to freedom and autonomy for many countries through colonialism. The end of the Second World War shifted geopolitical power constellations in many ways. The beginning of the Cold War formed new transnational dependencies in East and West. Yet this also created a turning point in colonial domination. It was the impetus for liberation movements across the globe. In the course of decolonization, foreign-ruled colonies such as India or Pakistan gained independence and political autonomy. In 1960, also referred to as the Year of Africa, 17 African countries became independent states. But 
does freedom from the oppressor always mean complete independence? Formally, asymmetrical structures of dependence such as colonialism and imperialism may have been abolished. However, the colonial heritage lives on through unbalanced political and economical dependencies. Former colonies are still exploited and struggle with colonial leftovers in the economy, administration or school systems. Additionally, colonial cliches and stereotypes still shape our way of thinking and need to be deconstructed. What does freedom mean to you and how can we overcome unfair dependencies? Freedom isn't everything, but without freedom, everything is nothing. You may have heard this quote before, and I know that freedom and liberty are two really big words. I see those words as the cause of my job as a journalist, trying to give people a voice who don't have this voice and also to defend these democratic values. But what do these words mean to you? How important are they to you? Before we find your answers to this question, we want to know from where our audience, from where you are watching. And I think, Esther, you have the answer. Yeah, so let's have a look at our word cloud to see where you're joining us from. So we have, as hoped, people from all over the world. So we have Algeria, France, Georgia, Uganda, Israel, a lot of different cities in Germany. Um, we have Chile, we have East Berlin specifically, Turkmenistan and Zimbabwe. Also, my personal favorite, someone just said, on a train. <laughs> So, um, as mentioned by Vasily, our next question would be, what does freedom and liberty mean to you? And you can answer in the same way via Menti, so www.menti.com, and you just type in the code 7200-4745, or you can use our YouTube comment section to let us know what freedom and liberty means to you. Okay. Back to you, Vasily. Esther, thank you very much. And I was a bit jealous of seeing you there sitting, so I decided to come to our lounge and uh, to sit down here. In 1962, Uganda became independent from the British. The question is, how do young people from Uganda remember the fight for independence? How peaceful was it? We are now broadcasting live to the capital of Kampala to talk to Sheila Nabachwa from the Foundation for Human Rights Initiative. Sheila, hi. Hi. You are home alone at the moment. There is no watch party in Kampala. Can you tell me why? Uh, thank you so much. Um, we are actually at the office. Um, we stayed at the office so that we can enjoy the watch party with some of my colleagues. But why uh, can't we be all together? We are still going through um, the second wave of COVID-19. And because of the government restrictions that um, allow for a curfew at seven o'clock, people have to be home very, very early. And therefore we couldn't be all together because it's late in the evening and we'll have to rush home. Sheila, you hosted a panel discussion and workshops with young people. To what extent was the end of the Second World War the beginning of the independence of Uganda? Um, it was a terrific panel, first of all. We had about 62 young people, some online and some at the venue, which was beautiful. Um, the, the, the view of many of the young people that were there was that Uganda, though um, re, uh, was independent in 1962, remains very dependent on its colonial masters today. And there are a lot of manifestations that they have put forward to demonstrate that. Issues of language, for example, we are discussed. English, for example, we are a former British colony, Uganda. So English remains our official language. Our own laws are written in English and the government finds it very hard sometimes to even translate these laws into our own local languages. Um, the way we dress up also has been a manifestation of our dependence. The way we depend on uh, loans from international institutions is also part of our dependence. So there's financial dependence a lot, and of course our culture and social dependence is manifested um, today. Speaking of the transformation, how, how peaceful do you remember it? It wasn't peaceful. The struggle was the struggle for independence was really a, a, a violent struggle, and the activists at that time, very young activists, were determined, you know, to pull um, Uganda away from their colonial. So it was not a, a, a peaceful struggle. It was a violent struggle. There were a lot of fights, you know, both, um, internally um, in 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 in, uh, in public spaces, in in government institutions, to ensure that Uganda was free. So it was not peaceful at all. 
But would you say uh, that it was the start of the fulfillment of human rights for all people? In the beginning, yes, because um, the, the activists at that time had aspirations. One of their aspirations was to ensure that Ugandans participate fully in governance and Ugandans are free completely from foreign dominance and foreign rule. So they worked hard to ensure that the systems, the policies, the culture and practices at that time reflected um, those aspirations. Today, it's a bit different. Sheila Nabachwa, thank you very much for your time, for your perspective and greetings to Kampala. Thank you. For our next piece called Histo Voices, created by filmmaker Pavel Franzusov, we stay in Uganda for the next two minutes. Dio, a young Ugandan, talks about his perspective on dependence and independence and you should really concentrate and listen and watch this. The people from Western countries often connect the time after World War II with the liberation from dictatorship, rise of democracy, freedom, human rights. But when you see what still happens in Africa, the liberation and independence never happened. I was very touched when I saw a cocoa processing factory in Nigeria whereby Africans were only given to work in shambas to pick coconuts and organize them. But when it came to the clear processing the factories to produce chocolate and other products, I could only see white people. And I want to tell you that countries which didn't have an opportunity to colonize Africa, they come and give loans to African nations and then they are given land as a mortgage. And at the end of it all, land is taken. We see how African countries are still disrespected by the Western countries. Imagine like the G20 that addresses major issues related to the global economy and sustainable growth. Look at European Union that is represented and then look at African Union that is not represented. What does that mean? We feel there is still a gap. And on behalf of the young people on the African continent and diaspora, we demand for the consideration of African Union to be put on the G20 to make it G21. Because there are minds and values to represent. Dio for that thought-provoking video, he raised a number of points that we want to drill down into a little bit. Now, we have the perfect person to do that with. I'd like to welcome Dr. Linda Irolu. She is a research fellow at the German Institute for Global and Area Studies, GIGA, in Hamburg. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I, I want to ask you about what we just heard there from Dio. He essentially said, his statement was that liberation, independence, never really happened in Africa. That is surely a, a controversial statement, particularly for many countries in Africa. What do you think? Yeah, I, I understand where the sentiments are coming from. Um, and I wouldn't argue that liberation did not happen. Because if we do argue that then we would overlook the role of Kwame Nkrumah, the likes of America Cabal in Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde, the likes of Patrice Lumumba in Congo. So these are people who fought for liberation and they died for liberation. So it did happen. However, liberation is a process. Hmm. So we did get the independence where, you know, the, the, the colonizers were removed and now replaced by African leaders. But we still haven't gotten the independence of, you know, having a firm government, having, you know, total liberation from our colonizers in the forms that he has mentioned. You say it's a process. Where is that process then right now? The process now is that we have in the independence in the sense that we have African leaders. Hmm. But are they actually in charge of government? Do they, you know, do they have total autonomy in the decisions that they make? And he made good examples of, you know, um, the economy. You know, you have the likes of Francophone countries that still owe colonial debt to, to France and they pay a lot of money to these to the West. You, you still have the issue in, in the Republic of Congo where resources are being snatched and this country has not re, uh, been peaceful since independence. So these are, you know, 
little instances where we can see that there is still a form of colonization going on, neocolonization, as Kwame Nkrumah would call it. What are the most significant dependencies that still exist in your perspective for you? Yeah, I would also like to emphasize that there, you know, the dependencies are, are two ways, a two yeah. way thing at the moment. Yeah. Uh, the West is you know, uh, growing and developing on the backs of Africa. Uh, we have the natural resources, uh, for instance, cobalt that comes from the Republic of Congo that, you know, powers our phones and our laptops and these resources are coming from the continent. So there is that dependency. Uh, you have the cocoa, you know, we can easily have our chocolate, but we have people who are slaving away in the farms who haven't even tried chocolate before. So these are instances of this. Um, however, we still see a form of financial in, uh, dependence, but this is not uh, this is not a, a challenge that we cannot overcome as Africans. Uh, but however, unfortunately, we've had uh, the wrong leadership to actually drive that change that we need. You mentioned the both sides of this dependency. Do you think the West sees it that way as well? I hope they do. I don't think that they do. Uh, but it will be important if they actually, uh, you know, uh, make the claim that they want to help the developing Africa, like they say. Uh, they should see their role in kind of perpetuating a neocolonialism and that dependence. But are there good forms of dependencies that can and do exist? There could be good form, forms of dependencies. Uh, a good instance of this could be the, the crisis that we face now, which uh, is COVID-19. Uh, we have been talking about uh, inequality in vaccines, and there's been talks about you know, sharing these formulas and sharing the patterns so that Global South countries uh, can also make use of this and produce their own uh, vaccine. So this is a, a good form of dependence, dependence. But however, we are not taking, making use of that opportunity and trying to help each other as humanity should. Okay, speaking of helping each other, your research focuses on regional organizations in Africa. How can these organizations work to promote economic and political and social independence? Yeah, so we've been, this is something that, um, you know, Africa has been working on for decades now, since the institution of the Af Organization of African uh, Unity and now the African Union. Uh, they've been trying to create agencies and, and, and institutes, uh, organizations within the African Union in order to solve some of those problems. A good instance of this is the um, African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which came came into uh, being in, uh, uh, this year um, and, and started implementation. So these are forms of regionalization that we can use to grow the economy. And we see that we are, you know, we are, we are at a disadvantage as African countries in trading with uh, Western countries. Uh, there's a lot of trade with um, outsiders and not with Africa. And there's so much advantage that we can gain by doing that. And this is why some of these organizations are now being created to do so. And I'm a huge Huge fan. I'm a huge, you know, promoter of Pan-Africanism, and I think our solutions is within the continent, and we should focus on that. But it is also working together, of course, with the West. So, how can the West um, empower those regional organizations on an eye level? Yeah. So we've been talking about uh, this is related to the conversation on on, on race. You know, there is a uh, there is a conversation now going on that you know, uh, in order to solve the problem of racism, that the you know, people, individuals should know the power, the privilege that they hold, and also make changes based on that. The West is a power holder in global politics. We cannot deny that. Look at the United Nations Security Council is a good instance of that. So they, they need to know uh, that they are the legitimate, legitimators in terms of norms, global norms that are standards across the world. They're the legitimators in terms of finances, who do fin global finances or like uh, aid or like uh, you know investments go to and what are the rules behind that. So they need to play that role as the power holders uh, to see their African partners or other, you know, countries as equal partners in the international systems before we can actually see change happening. In your research, you've also actually criticized um, the unbalanced structures in an institution like the United Nations. So what are the challenges for African countries to gain more of a foothold on that global stage? 
Yeah. So the challenge is that, yeah, you can say that, um, you know, Africa makes up uh, more than 20 percent of membership in the United Nations. And, oh, this is a, you know, a huge number which gives them voice. Uh, but the, the research that I'm, I'm, I'm about to go into now is looking into who represents, like who stands for Africa and who speaks for Africa and what's the reaction when Africa speaks. And this is, I think, one of the challenges that we faced in global politics, whereby Africa, you know, is speaking and is not being heard. Uh, we've been talking about the uh, Doha rounds now for 20 years, and we still do not know where we are going to in terms of negotiations. So uh, we, we need um, the system, you know, we need the so-called liberal order to be turned upside down, to actually show that there is equality among these member states before we can see change happening. I have to ask you, say Africa speaking, you're speaking of pan-Africanism. Does Africa, do African countries feel as if they're speaking with one voice? They do, uh, you know, they, they do try to find a common ground on some issues before they go to the United Nations. But you cannot deny that there are still uh, divergences in terms of preferences. After all, we have 55 member states, you know, with uh, 3,000 languages, diverse religions and ethnic groups. So it's difficult to actually come, you know, reach a consensus on some decisions. Uh, but something that the African Union has strived so far to do is to have a common ground, a common position before they move out to the global stage. Last question, Linda. What should the West and African countries do to develop a fair dependence, a dependency, a fair relationship going forward? So there is a need uh, to realize their role as legitimators. Um, and when you speak, you know, as a, as a, a, a knowledge producer and an expert, we, we get to not just advise the government, but also teach the upcoming generation. Mm. So we have a r huge role to play, you know, in making sure that Africans and not just the, the, the West speaking for Africa, but Africa is part of the conversation and is being heard. And there is a, you know, a, 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 a equal dialogue going on between all parties. Okay. Keeping Africa Africa part of a conversation. Thank you so much, Dr. Linda Irulu, you. for your very valuable insights there. We want to keep you part of the conversation as well. We want you to take part in this conversation we've just been uh, having here. So I'd ask you to comment on this question. How can we create equal relations between the global north and the global south? Submit your answers in our live chat and we'll catch up with them uh, in a little bit. Now, many music artists ad address inequality and how to overcome it in their lyrics, in their music. And our next guest does precisely that. Uh, she looks at gender-based violence as well as social problems and politics in her home country of Zimbabwe. She is a renowned hip hop artist. You might know of her already. And she delivers fabulous live performances. We're so happy to welcome now Awa Kiwe. The stage is yours. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Awa Kiwe. I'm a hip hop artist from Zimbabwe. And I will be entertaining you guys right here at the Histocon Festival 2021. I hope you guys enjoy the performance. Uh, yeah, uh, Oma Koba Kobo Tenga Katu Koba Koba Kubela Makanyana, Oma Koba Kobo Ponga Bakukum Jakazuma Bona Gumyama, Oma Tangan Lea Bohambe Kumatuma Fosho Zakobenga Yaw, Homsha Tonga Shula Yetambo, Hoponga Wukukus in Taba, Oma Hambe Pega Pans, Pesa Mashua Nigan Tuyas Kacha, Oma Hambe Pega Pansi, Oma Bona Gumyama, Dow. Vodosa, Silo, Jamela, I'm shouting at you right now. I'm blinda kusu. Hey, muponga ba kuku ma kuba kub. Wanta la kegi pelin fe ya kwan. Kuta u vodja vodja silo kabu ma sola ma bala sabi galin kwas. Muponga ba kuku ma kuba kub. Wanta la kegi pelin fe ya kwan. Kuta u vodja vodja silo kabu ma sola ma bala sabi galin kwas. Ma kuba kub. 
Hey, who might cop at pop? Sure, who might cop at pop? Hi, he still look up. Hey, who might cop at pop? Sure, who might cop at pop? Hi, who might cop at pop? Sure, he still look up. Hey, uh huh. Ha. Kuma koba koba tenga kato koba koba kobe la makanya na kuma koba kobo ponga ba kukum zaka zuma bona gumnyama kuma zanga ngai boka mbe kuma kuma foshe zako benga inyao kumsha tonga chulo itambo hoponga wukukuzintaba kuma kambe pega pansi beta masho ni ganzo ya skaja kuma kambe pega pansi kuma bona gumnyama dau vojosa silo jamela umsha tonga chulo itambo umlinda kus hey. Kupanga batu kuma kuba kub, wanka langhege pelim fe ya kud. Kuda uvoja uvoja silu kubu masuela mabala sabiga lingos. Kupanga batu kuma kuba kub, wanka langhege pelim fe ya kud. Kuda uvoja uvoja silu kubu masuela mabala. Hey, kuma kuba kub, hey, kuma kuba kub, sure, kuma kuba kub, kuba kub, the silu kubu, hey, kuma kuba kub, kuba kub, kuma kuba kub, kuba kub, kuma kuba kub, kuba kub, the silu kubu. Hey, <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys. Let's move on to the next one. Ah, oh. styling on the. Been around and I'm still here. Been a thug and I'm still queen. From the dead, but I stay clean and I know the hate that I stay lit. Four years, man, I laid low. Get some money, get a chance to blow. I got the laman, jung, bad, and kashan, and jung, and bobo, but look. This is my king, best repelling young. What's in the minute, what's in the bog? Well, in the minute, what's in my tongue? Oh, shish, now you miss all. I don't know, I'm not going to put them in the foot of the cock. I'm going to go to the cock, 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 I'm going to go Sure, I wanna go rap. Get some money, I'm rapping a cop. It's cop, it's gas, it's cop. But he's mingo. The belly cop, he's doing cool, my cop. Cop, cop, I'm rapping, I'm dancing, I'm talking, I'm putting the flow. I'm about to start, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna be cut, 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 I'm gonna Rapping is comedy, you know my veteran and devil and rapping if you never out. Queen of the melanin, have a fun and have a fun and come on, melayin. Rap lessons, let's start with the basics. You know who the best is, Flo Yanzama. I get a bang mele, I get a bang mele, sure. I get a bang mele, I seven running yali kuza fell and get a bang mele, I get a bang mele, I. Hi bo, hi yang get a bang mele, I. Hi bo, hi yang get a bang mele, sure. Hi bo, seven running yali kuza fell and get a bang mele, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the Corn Festival 2021. I hope you guys are having a great time at home. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much, so Awa. Much. That was a fabulous performance. I hope all of you enjoyed it as much as Esther and I did here. Thank you so much. So, you know, the focus of our show is independence and dependence and freedom. So I have to ask you, what does freedom mean to you as an artist from Zimbabwe? <coughs> Thank you so much. Um, freedom to me as an artist from Zimbabwe means the freedom to create without being stopped or being censored. Um, the freedom to speak out about injustice without fear of death, without fear of being killed or being tortured. And um, 
then to me, freedom in general is, is, a, is all about equal opportunities for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Awa. The freedom to perform here, of course, with us at Histocon. We're really happy that you're going to be back at the end of the show again. So looking forward to seeing your Thank next you. performance here. Now, we also asked young people in Uganda, Belgium, France, and Georgia what liberty and freedom mean to them and how the world could become more equal. So here's what they said. What is liberty? When I think about the word liberty, my mind immediately get flooded with all the images of uh, movements of liberation and all the people who fought against the oppression and shape the world that we live in today. Liberty is freedom, my right. It is a power or right of doing, thinking, speaking according to one's choice. Liberty is total freedom from oppression, both physically and mentally. It is the ability for one to make decisions uh, regarding how they, they feel or think and the outside op opinion is totally of no consequence. Quand j'entends le mot liberté, ce qui me vient à l'esprit, c'est de ne pas être jugé, d'être à l'aise de faire ce qu'on veut et d'être qui on veut. There are so many stories, so many books, so many narratives, so many myths which have not been acknowledged and some of which have been almost completely erased. So being sensitized to different forms of knowledge production, that's one of the ways to strengthen equality. Pour renforcer l'égalité entre le nord et le sud de la planète, faudrait d'abord qu'on accepte nos différences. Et tout cela à travers le partage et les échanges culturels. Tenmirth. The way in which we can strengthen the equality between the global north and the global south is through empowering the youth in the global south with, no, with tools and knowledge for them to become as conversant with technology as the youth in the global north are. Uh, we can strengthen the equality between global and South North uh, by creating uh, uh, liberal, democrac uh, liberal democracies and liberal constitutions as well as state institutions in South. Decolonization since 1945 still shapes our world today to an extent that we are free and can make our personal decisions as countries because we are independent, but also to still a certain extent, we still need foreign help and aid. Thank you so much for your inspiring input, Histocon community. And we were asking many questions already to you, what you think, what your opinions are. We asked what you think of freedom and liberty, what these words mean to you. And Esther, I think you have answers already. Yeah, we got a lot of wonderful answers. Um, so I'm just going to present what freedom and liberty means to our Histocon community. So. Um, very simply, it means no fear. Um, also, that you can do whatever you want with respect, so without hurting people. Um, it's also about having the right to be different in any kind of way. And it's the state of being free in expression and acting how, what feels um, normal to you. Um, another quote I, that I really liked was very personal to someone here in Germany. Um, for me as a German, as a very privileged person, it's about my individual perspective and the fact that I can shape my own world how I want to, without any restrictions, but still acknowledging that there's a, there's a valuable or a variety of realities worldwide. So just recognizing that not everybody's the same in their opportunities to be free. Um, so, yep, that was freedom and liberty. And then I just wanted to touch on what, um, what Sumi was chatting with Linda Arulu about, um, how can we create equal relations between the global north and the global south? And the example that was given by the Histocon community was that language can actually, um, language actually is an opportunity to create equal relations. So um, not having ownership over language and actually using that to be the common ground, the lingua, uh, lingua franca, I think they call it. Um, so yeah, that's all from the Histocon community today. Thank you for all of your answers. And now back to you, Sumi. Thanks, Esther, and thanks to our community as well for those really interesting insights. I think of language as a bridge is a great one. 
We have the opportunity to go visit uh, another watch party. Now we're heading over to Marseille and uh, we're going to go there live to speak with Janina Chetty from Unterkulturell about their workshop series that deals with different stories of independence and dependence in their city of Marseille. So hello, Janina. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everyone. It's great to see you all. So you developed creative workshops for young adults there. So tell us what these activities looked like. Ah, oh, directly. Oh, really? <laughs> ah. uh, so we are a group of fifteen persons in Marseille, and we worked on. A, we did a workshop actually on the uh, colonization history and memory. And um, so we talked a lot about these topics, and then we do, did a graffiti workshop. Uh, uh, so you can see some of the art we did just over there uh, with the group um, about this, this topics. Yeah, that's really impressive artwork. So what places, what sites did you visit that reflect um, dependence and independence? Uh, uh, alors, uh, bonjour, je m'appelle Fleta. Je j'habite à Marseille. J'ai 19 ans. Alors ne, dans le groupe, nous sommes 15 personnes. Non, vous avez visité Oh non, okay, OK OK. Alors à Marseille, on a visité Notre-Dame de la Garde. Euh, on a visité les monuments euh, de la gare de Saint-Charles. Et euh, qu'est-ce qu'on a visité d'autre so my name is Feta and I am in, in Marseille. I am 19 years old and right now we, have, we are with the, the group. Um, and in Marseille we visited Notre Dame de la Garde, uh, which is a, a church, and the train station Saint Charles. And what stories of, of heritage did you explore together? Go ahead. Ok, on a parlé de la colonisation qui, qui arrivait aux Comores et à Mayotte, et euh, de la différence entre Mayotte et les autres îles du Comore, parce que Mayotte est restée dépendante de la France et pas les autres. So for example, we talked about the colonization in Mayotte and the, the Comores. Uh, because, for example, Mayotte stayed a French, uh, well, a French island, but the Comor didn't. So we talked about this. Wonderful. Well, it has been great to visit with you at your watch party there in Marseille. Nice to look at the artwork up there behind you. So again, greetings from here in Berlin to all of you, uh, to our Histocon partners there in Marseille. It's been uh, great having you with us. And the group of people that we saw, they produced a time-lapse video about the outcome of their workshops. And that will be up soon to view on histocon.de. And uh, now I will be handing back over to Vasily. Colonial stereotypes still shape our world. How do we rethink colonial history and overcome colonialism? That's a question our next fireside guest deals with in his work. He's a musician and an activist from Berlin. Hello, Vincent Baba Butilaba. Here you are. Hi. So, we have to go in our living room. This is why I ask you one question and while we walk, you can answer. All right. So, how do you feel more as an artist or as an activist? And okay. feel free to Good follow question. Me. Interesting question. Yeah, for the longest time, I tried to separate the two, I think. But it's only now that I realize that it gets more interesting if you combine them. So, I think I would consider myself more maybe, or maybe the activism work is more important and the art thing comes second but yeah i combine them mostly L let's talk about this combination how do you use art and activism to deconstruct colonialism well hmm vasily i think i would maybe flip it around because i 
I really believe that, sort of, or at least I hope that my art or the things I do are sort of a manifestation of all the movements that fight for a better life for everybody. And yeah, I think my main goal is uh, to give people an emotional experience, the experience that another world is possible or that we are the ones making history. And how would you describe where does your emotion, your motivation come from? It's also a good, it's a very long and complex <laughs> uh, <have> question. <laughs> We have time, great. Um, I mean, I think it is partly um, informed by how I was brought up here in Berlin, the values of my parents, but also the things I saw in, uh, in the world. I come from an international uh, family and seeing sort of the disparities between um, just two different regions on the world and how poverty is in one region and how easy access is to a good education is in another region. This sort of, I think, politicized me greatly. Your latest play is called Eigensinnige Leben in German. Yeah, yeah. How, how would you translate it? Because I think it's always difficult to translate art. <laughs> yeah, uh, Wayward Lives. Uh, it's actually a book title from a book by Sadia Hartmann. And your play talks about black activists in Berlin in the early 20th century. Mm. What role would you say does freedom play? And also, what does it have to do with looking back? Mm. Well, I guess looking back, no, I'm pretty confident that looking back is super important because at least the way I was, I, I grew up in Berlin and the way I learned it sort of in school was we look back and we also look at black lives uh, that have been here before us, but we never sort of talk about what the people wanted, what they were dreaming of, um, how they wanted to live their lives and their freedom plays a big role. There are also very different ways of looking back. I know yeah. many elderly people in Germany who also look back, but uh, yeah. in a not very constructive way. What do you think? What makes looking back or, or what's, what's the right way from your perspective to look back? I mean, I think it's a changing of perspective. We look often, we often look back and look at oppression and suffering, but it's super important to look back and look at the people who opposed oppression and who opposed violence. And then it gets really interesting because we learn that there have always been people in solidarity, in solidarity opposing violence and so on. And If we look at their demands, um, for example, the, the demands of the League um, for the Defense of Black People in Germany from 1929, um, they were really clear and they had very clear visions uh, of how the future should be like. Equal pay for equal work, regardless of gender or race. Or equal rights for everybody living in Germany, not just for a privileged few. So if we make this uh, sort of change in perspective, we also get a feeling of how a better world could look like for us. So we look back and look into our future at the same time. And what would you say, how do the relics of colonialism manifest in our everyday life? Yeah. I live not um, far away from the Meyer Ufer, a street in Berlin and Kreuzberg. Uh, not long ago, the street had a different name. It was called Gröben Ufer, and Gröben is the name of a very brutal German colonialist. So we have, on a symbolic level, change, but still there are still different uh, uh, other names in sort of uh, in Berlin. So on, we have this on a symbolic level, but we also clearly have um, still violence and oppression and exploitation on a very material level. Um, I mean, the German police is training people, uh, doing pushbacks at the, in the Mediterranean, Frontex. And I mean, only in 2016, over 5,000 people died in the Mediterranean Sea. So. We still, also on a material level, have a very brutal post-colonial reality. And what would you say regarding our viewers, every one of us? What can we do to reduce colonial stereotypes? Um, well, I, you know, Vasily, I think we, we don't have a lot of choices in our life. We all have to work in order to eat, we all have to work in order to pay our rent and so on, but we do have the choice to sort of fight for a better world. And this is what I would say, especially to young people. Uh, yeah, we, I learned so much um, in the struggle. I, I had so many uh, new things to think about, to learn, and it's, re it's really a different way of seeing the world, I, I, I guess. So 
the choice we have is to fight for a better world and this is what everybody should do. So reflect on our self, on our behavior, listen to other yeah. people and also look back and learn from the past. Yeah, definitely. Said. But I think it's not only a, um, a work within yourself, not only, but also, you know, if everybody thinks the right way, we still have those pushbacks. We still have Frontex. So it's also listening to the people's demands. So. There is a clear demand of abolishing this institution called Frontex. There is a clear demand to create more passport equality. I can travel wherever, almost wherever the heck I want because I have a German passport. How come a person from, let's say, the Congo can't do the same thing? So there are, there are also really concrete things we have to sort of um, fight for. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Vincent. Thank you, Vasily. Um, It's not done yet. We have prepared something else. Uh, yeah. And this is why we uh, have to go back to the main stage. Um, it's a little game for you. Okay. It's called the who, the what, the when. Very often we are surprised or shocked that fighting for more rights and freedom takes such a long time. Let's see if you can bring five historical events in the right order on your individual pin boards. And I said you. It's also Esther playing against you, Vincent. <laughs> um, so we have... Djibouti becomes independent from France, voting rights for women in the Democratic Republic of Georgia, Uganda becomes a member of the UN, voting rights for women in France and Nelson Mandela's released from prison. So these are the things you need to bring in the right order from the earliest to the latest. And you have one minute time. Um, and also, because it's not only you, you can also play. Um, you know uh, the, the words, you know um, the, the different stages and bring them in the right order. And I have my phone here with me because <laughs> you have only limited time, one minute. Are you guys ready? Yeah, I'm not sure I have much of a clue how to order them, but I'll try. <laughs> yeah, try with these nice yeah. <laughs> things. <laughs> okay, so one minute starts now. Okay. I'm just gonna go start with what I know, I think. You don't have to know the exact year, it's just the right order. Forty seconds left. I'm not sure about this one. Twenty seconds left. Mm. You're ready. Okay. You have you have uh, five seconds. Four, <laughs> three, two, one. And that's it. Oh, now the timer starts. Perfect. So let's start off with voting rights for women in the Democratic Republic of Georgia and France. We have France here. We have Georgia here. Who, who of you is right? What do you think? Uh, I can you, can no you guess, uh, guess in, in what year it was in, in Georgia? Well, my guess was... I have to also admit uh, maybe a hole in my education, but <laughs> Democratic Republic of Georgia, I don't know how it is called right now, but Democratic Republic always sounds like sort of a socialist country. So my guess was that maybe this was a socialist period of in Georgia and socialist countries mostly were very early in granting women uh, voting rights. Oh, smart. I just thought that maybe this just happened before World War II because it's France and I don't know, in England it happened before so maybe it happened in France the same. Vincent is actually right. Oh. Georgia, it was 1918. Uh, we have then voting rights for women in France which is also correct here. It was in 1944. Then we have Uganda becomes a member of the UN. Also the right order. And I think... I think we, we have a winner because in 1977 <laughs> Djibouti becomes independent from France and in 1990 Nelson Mandela is released from prison. Congratulations, Vincent. Well done, Esther. Mm. Anyway, I think it, it was a difficult <laughs> task, but I'm also pretty sure, Sumi, you would have known the right order as well. 
let's just say I'm happy I didn't have to play because I don't think I would have gotten the right order as well. But congratulations to both of you. Well done. As you can see, I'm in the middle of the tape that guys here. We're going to have to get them a new board soon because they're moving really fast. We're going to check on it again in a moment. But first, we want to check on another partner, Georgia. Independence and dependence take on new meaning in Georgia. And our partners produced a, vi a video about their workshops in the city of Caspi, where they explored dependence and independence through the lens of the past. Take a look. We, for this year, have chosen a very specific place for our workshops. It's a Caspi municipality. Caspi was an antique city, which after Soviet Union has become a very industrial place. And it somehow lost the attractiveness. Young people are not interested to stay there anymore. And the people living there usually say that it became kind of a dead end of the street where nobody is turning. And on the other hand, Gaspi municipality is very interesting because it's on a borderline. Every single day people wake up not knowing if they wake up on the side of the Georgian state or on the occupied side. And they might even every morning wake up not understanding that where is their land, where is the cemetery where their relatives are buried. They are facing this these dilemmas of dependence and independence, being free young person in a land where you never know where, where, where your house will be on the next morning. Uh, therefore, it was very important to analyze so how of the past, how the present is also affecting our future and how it is affecting our mindset and our goals and our dreams for the future. For me, uh, independence is responsibility and uh, after our independence, um, 30 years already passed and it's uh, still hard for Georgian people to be independent in their minds, in their thinkings and um, in their actions. We are officially independent, but we have a lot to uh, learn and to gain to become uh, independent. Uh, for me, it's important to know um, my family's, my country's past mistakes to make it right in the future. We are very happy that we had this chance to analyze our past with our great participants from Caspi municipality. And we really hope that this rethinking the past will help us to be more responsible for the future ahead. Thank you, Georgia, for that contribution. And there's going to be a longer version of that video on the website, histicon.de, very soon. And I promise you a closer look at Tape That. As you can see, a lot of progress has been made already. It looks incredible. And I'm really excited to see how it evolves over the course of the second day of Histicon as well. Um, and that actually wraps up our first live broadcast of Histicon. So thank you to all of our youth and our partners and to you, the Histicon community. Uh, and it was a great opening. We'll be back here for our second live broadcast tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central European time. And we should be careful not to become part of this <laughs> artwork because we are very close. Uh, we'll have videos tomorrow again, watch parties in Japan, in Israel and Germany. And we will have fireside chats again with the app developer Ifa Hazel from the Innovation Hub in Israel and the researcher Sarah Jones from the Birmingham University. You can also expect musical performances from the talented artist Mulai. She wants to create music that lasts. And now we say goodbye and thank you for today and stage free for our Kiwi. Thank you. Yeah. I hope you guys are having a great time at home. Starting on yeah, 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 uh Sure, uh Salil begazel and no man feeling yagal nugum kelling lama rhyme of Bobby's bella pele lava shabum twat yagan yagal net to sell a yiming welling welling bakalang bakolo zele ben colo zele how are the villains left and killing and give me the rhythm and spitting the venom and I'm on the spirit is at the beginning cover the feeling I see how I did it one in a million is seven did it and don't admit it but look at the deal friend repeated I'm ripping my city I'm feeling inquisitive against but we sang on my line dominoes I I still got sellers I got shipped to rejoice I 
Haka double flows, keeping rappers on their tippy toes and chitum god. Van geni sama zanga ting tipum god. Everybody knows that I'm the rap, don't dada. These rappers looking up to me, call me the god mother. Rap kanda kanda bat bat dope bana manga. But handi yada yada on the mic, kago. Rap kanda kanda, show, show, rap kanda kanda. I show rap kanda kanda. Kanda kanda, but handi yada yada on the mic, kago hada. Rap kanda kanda. Show, show, rap kanda kanda. Show, show, rap kanda kanda. Show, show, but handi yada yada on. Yo, who rap him go to my son who's busy on my tot. The go is some pot, I'm a bit caught in lens on my god. I'm a number per one pot on a little lama top and a full of my cause, young and a majors. Gigging goss, sick natty mool and cancel and got to lula seven and it when you cool our crook. I am in don't says a cool and I was told a school as is full. I was cool and I'm a brood at a school that keep the fame of Faggy Mula. Flowing a corn, for a lepin and a ramen a go, Kalalis go pull up a call, best work on and for a majority. Him a chance to call, yo, a beast is off the leash, a pest is crushing all the bones. I'm a kanda kanda, show, show, rap kanda kanda, show, show, rap kanda kanda, kanda kanda, but handi yada yada on the mic, kako hada, rap kanda kanda, show, show, rap kanda kanda, yo, yo, rap kanda kanda, kanda kanda, but handi yada yada on the mic, kako hada. But turn the yada yada on the mic, Kago. Shit, shit, shit. Hit the Calm Festival 2021. I hope you guys had a great time at home. Shit, shit, shit. My name is Awa Kiwe, if you've just joined us, and I'm a hip hop artist from Zimbabwe. And I hope you guys had a great time. Thank you so much. Shit. <laughs> Thank you.